in classical painting, you'll notice that there's one main focal point on all paintings. If you look at old paintings from the Renaissance, uh, Rembrandt, uh, all that, all those guys, there's one basic point, and from there on, Da Vinci, etc., it all gets larger. You get the more it becomes a little more uh, nebulous, a little more unfocused. But you have that one focus, that one place you want to see. That's pretty much what I what I want to do with Animal March. <coughs> My other style would be uh, an art form that has taken a, a little more importance in the later years, which is called dark art. Okay, so also you know some people will call it gore art, some people will call it horror art, uh, gothic. That's uh, <laughs> we're saying. Um, so it's an interesting form because you, uh, you can challenge yourself. Uh, you can make things that are a little more. Softcore, little things are a little more hardcore. Uh, if you ever go visit the website after this uh, little conference, you'll see their stuff there's a little more, you know, 18 and over, <laughs> if you want. Um, but, you know, the subjects here are basically, you know, always things that are related to horror or related to fear, related to, you know, to make the, uh, the viewer a little bit uneasy. It's a, kind of a little challenge I like to do. And see how far you can push yourself as, as an image and what kind of image can be accepted by, you know, in mainstream society. And, um, interestingly enough, uh, there's more and more dark art galleries that are popping up uh, a little more all over the place. So we used to have one in Quebec City a few years ago called the Moulin Sadit, which is sadly closed. But um, it was a fun place with a lot of interesting things. And uh, in Montreal, there was a gallery called the Galerie Abyss, which is also, I think, closed now. Now, they open, well, galleries open and close, so it's not because the art is not catching on. But in the US, there's a very, very big market uh, for dark art. Uh, moving right along, so I talked about my, uh, my music guys. And of course, you have good old abstract art right here. Okay, now, according to you, if I take a poll, which of these paintings are, is the most difficult to produce? Which ones would you say? Would it be this, an animal, dark, a music guy, or abstract art? <laughs> Who said abstract? Yay! Good call. Okay. Why is abstract so difficult? Any ideas? Well, as an artist, or for those of you who draw a bit, or who, or who write, or who play an instrument or something, um, uh, it's, it's very difficult to look at a piece of abstract art and say, well, there's talent or not. You know, did the guy just like cloth paint on a canvas and call it art? Okay. What's in back of that? You know, why, how did the person get to make that piece? And say, well, you know, okay, well, there's, there's, there's something underlying here, okay? There's maybe some symbolism in there, like a whole bunch of stuff. So t for me, abstract art is something I struggled with a long time. Uh, when I was uh, much younger, to me, uh, this was like total crap. I would go see like art like this in a gallery, like, oh, come on, like, anybody can do that. And then one day I said, okay, I'm gonna make an abstract piece. And I sat there with my palette knife and my brush going, yeah. What are we going to do? <laughs> you know, what is good abstract art? What is bad abstract art? You know, can I make just like, you know, a blob of paint and call it a piece of art? Uh, so uh, yeah, it's 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 a little more difficult to to actually, you know, realize because most of the other forms of art you're doing, you know, they're they're based on things that are real or 